it, so I got ahead and uh, got the thrust bearing done. It was pretty relatively easy. Uh, the only downfall uh, that really was horrible was that clip. It's actually kind of like a spiral clip. It's actually got it like a spring, but it's flat. It, uh, I mean, there is no spring to it, but I mean, if you pulled it apart, it's almost like a slinky. And uh, I mean, it's a really strange clip. I ended up putting the old one back in there and then realizing they gave me a new one, but uh, it really doesn't matter. The uh, This one's still good and it still functions just as good and I made sure that uh, it's not coming out. But other than that, it's got a brand new thrust bearing. I uh, went ahead and just did the uh, clutch assembly and threw the flywheel in and the clutch and everything, put it all to spec. And uh, I cleaned all of my oil leak that I have from up there. As you can see, the valve cover gasket up there, you can see the residual oil. Well, it actually leaks. So what I did was I just cleaned it for now. And uh, I just ran up to the auto parts store, got myself a nice Felpro head gasket kit. And uh, I'm going to do the intake manifold gasket because I believe that comes with it. And... Uh, you know, go through it. So I also, while I was up there, I decided to get a rear main seal. Now, the seal that's behind this flywheel, it had a little bit of leaking under on the bottom. And so it, it really didn't bother me. But you know what? I started thinking, I'm already here. I might as well change that rear main seal and do everything I can that's right here, right now. So I'm going to rip that back off. And uh, we'll end up changing that rear main seal and uh, moving on to putting the clutch back on. But you know, I mean, honestly, it's just me being OCD. Uh, th that rear main seal was fine. It probably could go for a little bit longer, probably another 50, 60 K before I'd have to rip it back off. But who wants to rip a transmission off for an $18 seal? So I spent the 18 bucks and uh, I'm gonna throw that in. Okay, so real quick, um, right here, I put some paint marker on here for this alignment tab and this little spot right here so that I can align it back onto the flywheel. It only goes on there one way, so uh, you really can't mess it up, but uh, it took me a little while from spinning it around until I finally got it all to align and all the bolt holes and fit perfectly. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and paint mark that now so I don't have to worry about it when I'm putting it back on trying to figure it back out again. Just a uh, little you know, preventative maintenance type deal to help me out in the future. All right, so it's the next day. Tired, did a lot. I uh, got the rear main seal done. That's all set. Got everything all bolted back up to spec. Um, in case you guys are wondering what the spec is, it's 55 to 65 pounds of pressure for the flywheel for the six bolts and uh, 25 pounds um, in a star pattern for the clutch. So uh, other than that, it's pretty relatively easy. Um, now I gotta address everything else. Uh, this does have a leaky fuel line, and if you Ford guys, I was raised Ford, so uh, I'm, I'm obviously gonna stick with Ford. Um, you guys know about the quick release fuel lines. Yeah, they're they're not so quick release. Uh, they're kind of a pain in the butt. They've got that spring that goes all the way around, and you gotta get that to separate and go in the pocket in order for the line to disconnect. It's really a pain in the butt. But uh, yeah, just so you can get to that little you know, O-ring that's in there. So um, it's also got that valve cover gasket that also leaks as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and start ripping off the top end of this motor and uh, basically go right at it. I went and bought myself a nice Felt Pro gasket kit. It comes with pretty much everything that I need. You know, it, uh, what's really good about that is for this, it comes with the intake manifold gasket the upper intake manifold gasket, the valve cover gasket, throttle body mounting, air bypass valve, you know, and uh, and so on and so on. It's pretty nice. So and that, it comes with all the gaskets as well as obviously the valve cover and whatnot. So yeah, I get to tear some more stuff apart and work on this. I'm going to see if I could do kind of like a basic fix on this fuel line because I can't get it to separate. I've been trying to... Uh, to get the quick disconnect to just you know separate and I've been fighting it now my hands are killing me so I, I'm gonna take a break on that and just maybe jump on this valve cover gasket and at least get that oil you know at least I can get the oil to stop leaking right so I don't want the oil leaks I like a clean engine bay um, I don't have to worry about any 
air or uh, what not getting in my engine and whatnot. So, rambling, I like to do that. We'll keep on rocking and rolling. Okay, so I got the throttle body taken off now. I just set it off to the side. It's pretty fairly easy. It's just the uh, two 10 millimeter brackets here, the four 10 millimeters around, and then there's two 10 mils that attach the uh, EGR valve over here. So uh, that's disconnected also as well. Uh, just disconnect all of the, uh, the plugs. Pretty fairly easy. Take off the intake, plenum, disconnect your spark plugs, and then uh, I went ahead and I drew all of the screws out for the, or excuse me, the little eight millimeter bolts that go all the way around. There's four on each side. And I'm getting ready to pull this manifold, or this, excuse me, this uh, valve cover off now. So now basically, um, I'm just gonna go around and with a dry rag, I'm gonna wipe everything down and get in all these crevices and whatnot and basically break up all the debris that I can as much as possible and then uh, I'm gonna go grab the air hose and take about 120 PSI of air to this entire engine bay and blow all that loose debris out of the way so I don't have to worry about when I pull this valve cover off and I'm kind of knocking wires around crap doesn't fall down inside my engine so we kind of keep that to a minimal I'm gonna go ahead and flush this flush this entire engine with oil anyways and give it a brand new oil change but of course I want to change all the gaskets first so uh, I'm gonna pull this off I'm gonna change this uh, intake manifold or man I keep I'm bad today guys I'm really fumbling with the, the words I'm gonna go ahead and change the valve cover gasket and uh, throw that on with the nice blue Felpro one and uh, get that all torqued to spec. Uh, the sad thing is, is when I took them all off, they were all loose. They, none of them were tight except for one. So of the eight, eight mils, only one was actually snug. So that, that gives me a reason why that, you know, they're, they're probably leaking. So other than that, uh, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put the valve cover back on after I get it all painted and cleaned up because uh, I don't like rust and I don't like seeing it. I mean, this is my truck. This is gonna be the new truck, which is really nice. I wanna take care of this and eventually I wanna put a turbo on it. So uh, if you guys don't know anything about the two threes with the turbos on them, you guys might wanna do a little bit more research and realize that the EcoBoosts now are two threes. So they never stopped making two three engines. This is where they started, guys. These accept turbos very well. So uh, I'm probably just going to put a little turbo on this for now, boost it until I blow it, and then uh, probably EcoBoost swap this. But other than that, um, I'm going to do that, move on to the intake manifold, and uh, change some gaskets out on that, change out the EGR gasket. And I just want to make sure everything's all, you know, basically torqued down and whatnot before I put about five or six pounds of boost to this thing. Uh, from what I understand, they... Uh, they accept it pretty well. I've done enough research to know that you could basically just bolt them on and, uh, you know, just a little bit of tuning here and there. They're, they're pretty reliable. But uh, the gearing, I know I got to change the gearing because the gearing in this is very short. But uh, that gives you guys something to look forward to, to me actually wrenching on. But for now, I'm going to make this 2.3 reliable. I'm going to go get motors and transmissions and car parts with it. So it's basically going to be my, uh, my little trip wagon type deal. So... If uh, you guys are kind of curious of how this all goes together, stay tuned. I'll uh, basically try to vlog as much as I can to let you guys know how these things come apart, you know, if you're interested in uh, these Ford engines. Guys, I'm sorry, you know, I, I do build Subarus, you know, that's mainly what I build, um, but this is my truck, you know, so if you guys don't want to watch the Ford stuff, by all means, you know, skip through it, you won't hurt my feelings. You know, I appreciate you guys actually, you know, tuning in and supporting my channel anyways. So even if you guys do skip through, I'm not going to know. So by all means, if you guys want to skip through and see the finished product, man, skip through. I really appreciate the view, guys. Just the fact that you guys are checking me out just to see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. That's amazing, and I thank you guys for that. So uh, enough of kissing your ass. Thanks, guys. I'm going to get back to this. All right. Cut it off. So uh, basically just had to uh, finagle this wire harness just up and out of the way so it basically cleared enough to get it off. Uh, it doesn't even look like I needed to disconnect the EGR but uh, I was told that uh, or excuse me recommended that I did that but it uh, doesn't look like I needed to do that but uh, obviously I'm going to change the intake manifold gasket anyway so I had to disconnect it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and change that out to the blue one now. Alright, so here it is, brand new. I'm gonna go in.
So you guys can so you guys can get a better idea of what they're like. This is the original gasket from the factory. You can see it's pretty crappy, pretty thin and whatnot. Um, throw that right in the garbage. This is Felpro. Look how thick that is. So, and it's uh, obviously form fitted for the actual top of the head, and uh, the OEM was not. So that's definitely an original. This is, you know, obviously an upgrade. Also as well, um, another thing that I really should state, the reason why I buy these is you guys can see the brass inserts, uh, factory gaskets or, or any other kind of cheaper gasket doesn't put these in here. And the reason for this and the purpose for a brass insert is when you put the hardware through here and it gets to a point where the product or excuse me, the two parts are mashing together. They're going to start spinning with that hardware because of that and it actually starts spinning this gasket and it gets a binding area and a pinching area where it's actually too tight here. So it's tighter here than it is here putting more pressure on the gasket where the hardware is. This actually stops it and puts it at the correct mill thickness and it actually goes tight to the actual spacer. So, which is really good about that and uh, you can see there's still the brass insert is not as thick as the gasket is itself. So the gasket will come down to the brass insert and meet flush. So just so you guys know, the brass insert is not too tall. It does not hit the valve cover. It does not hit the head. You know, it will seat down and squish with the hardware and give you a perfect seal. This is the reason why I go with Felpro Blues. You know, obviously they're uh, a lot better than the factory. Alright, so basically I just went over it and uh, covered everything with plastic. I got the intake manifold taken off. I got the valve cover taken off. So uh, I went inside of it and uh, basically right here on the top edge of where it mates for the new gasket, I cleaned it up with some brake cleaner on a rag and then went through it with uh, some air gun, blew everything, all the ports out. Basically, uh, that way I don't have anything falling inside the motor. I. Uh, See, I brake cleaned all this, I cleaned all this up, got all the oil out of the ports, and uh, basically ready to put a new gasket on it for that and that. Alright, so before I do anything, you guys can see those fuel lines right there, the high compression fitting. Well, the one that looks clean, the one that's farthest, not the rusty one, but obviously the clean one, that's the one that leaks. So, uh, yeah. I gotta pull that high compression fitting apart and change that out and uh, yeah they are never a quick disconnect fuel line I've been fighting with this thing for about two days off and on and it's really kicking my butt so hopefully today I got some new tools and uh, I'm really hoping they uh, they do the trick uh, the one that I was using to try and get the line I don't think is the right size so I think that's the issue but uh, I'm gonna try and disconnect that and change that out Okay, so let it be said that uh, always stick to your first judgment for the pure reason that uh, if you know something works, go buy it. Just do it. You know, if you think it works, do it. So I didn't bring one of my quick disconnect tools, the refrigerant um, fuel line sleeves, the plastic ones. So I ended up having my dad stop at Harbor Freight and just picking me up just a real cheap sleeve kit. Um, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here it is right here. So, just one of these, you know. They make really expensive tool kits that are also like $20, $30, $40 to remove these things. They come metal, they come plastic. But uh, I know the cheapest thing out there works perfect, those sleeves. And he's like, you sure those are going to work? And I was like, Dad. So he ended up borrowing some from uh, the Subaru dealership that he works at. Yeah, my dad works at a Subaru dealership. So we're Subaru family. Anyways, long story short, he borrowed some. They were metal. They didn't work. And I kept telling him, Dad, they're killing my hands. or my hands up. I don't like these. This is not what I use. I like the, the, the sleeves. They're real cheap. They go right on. So, uh, yeah, he went and stopped, and he got me some. So... Long story short, how I do it is I clamp one side of the fuel line with the uh, uh, locking pliers, the other side, so it doesn't move. I'm able to spin it back and forth, basically, with, like, handles. I put that sleeve on there, I slide that down in, and once I know that it separated the spring, I just twist it back and forth, and I pulled it right out. So, 
Other than that, I mean, there is no quick disconnect. You're not going to be able to hold that with your hands, guys. I, I by all means, recommend that you loosely clamp on one of the uh, pliers on both ends there, as you can see. And it gives you uh, some handles to grip onto. There's really no room underneath here, guys. But as you can see, that is what I use. The cheapest tool out there, Harbor Freight. You don't need the most expensive one to do the job. All right, so this is the O-ring set that we have. Um... Yeah, it's a little extravagant. Uh, you don't need to go out and get this crazy of an O-ring set. You just really just need to get the O-rings that you need. But uh, I know for a fact that these are the R108s. Um, and it tells you the size here on the on the back side, guys, which is the 716s or the 5.8s fuel line. So uh, it goes right to this, right to the uh, R18, and tells you right on the outside which one it is. So you just need to match it up. So... Um, What's really good about these, um, these are made for fuel lines and refrigerant lines also as well, but um, they're significantly thicker. So as you can see, the diameter is still the same diameter. It's the 5 8 or the 7 16 all the way around, but the uh, see how the thickness of the gasket, and then look at the thickness of that one. So it's the same diameter, but it's going to be a thicker gasket, and it actually lasts a lot longer. So the breakdown is actually going to be a, you know, a lot longer process. So this is actually a better seal. Um, so I would recommend going out and making sure that you put in correct seals and uh, better seals, not just an OEM product, because as you can see, Ford has a lot of issues with uh, leaky disconnects.